A college campus is a breeding ground for developing alcoholism. Drugs, drugs, okay? 85% of people are not being themselves. They're being the absolute best version of who they want to be. And they hand you out a bunch of free stuff. If a case needs to be caught, it shall be caught. I think they just need a group therapy convention. I'm speaking from a personal experience if you couldn't tell. What is up boyfriends, girlfriends, and everybody in between? My name is Lexi. If you haven't seen my face before, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And the nice comment shadow of the video goes to this person right here. Thank you so, so much for all of your kind words. They truly, truly mean the world. And if you want to be my next nice comment shadow in my next video, just leave a nice comment down below. Welcome to the video, guys. As always, I hope that everybody is doing well. And in this video, I am filming a college advice video. Typically when I do these sit down videos it's like a get ready with me or a Q&A. This is just strictly off the dome college advice. I have 10 topics written here on my notes that I'm going to talk about candidly and give you guys my opinion, my advice, my experiences on them so you guys can feel safer and more prepared going to college. Whether you're a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, or a senior, I know that a lot of us are going to be back on a college campus for the first time in a really really long time. Feel free to share your experience and your opinions in the comments down below. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on post notifications because I am moving into my first apartment as a college student and so I will be doing a college move-in apartment series. Lots of college dorm friendly but apartment halls as well and obviously vlogging my move-in experience. So stay tuned for that and college vlogs are back. They're coming back as soon as school starts. I took a break from doing them because I was home doing remote learning for my sophomore year but now I'm going into my third year as a junior at Lehigh University studying cognitive science and journalism as a double major and I am super stoked and super excited to bring you guys along so without any further ado let's get into this video I am going to speak as I was saying candidly about all of these topics and if you guys agree if you guys disagree feel free to just sound off in the comments down below the first out of 10 topics I am going to be talking about are roommates my freshman year I did have a roommate she was very very sweet and I do attend a PWI I was super super grateful that she was also another black girl because it just made being away from home at a predominantly white institution a little bit easier but of course if you have a roommate if you're living in a space with somebody especially your first year there are going to be some times that you butt heads first I'll talk about sort of like your roommate selection process I would advise especially first year students incoming freshmen if you will to not room with somebody that you were friends with in high school even if it's your best friend friend that is just grounds for things not going the way that you want them to go a lot of arguments a lot of beautiful friendships just crumble after people room together and I feel like it's most probable if you do that as a first year student just because you're trying to figure out the lay of the land you might want to become a new person reinvent yourself leave your past behind and even if that's your best friend and you want to have a college experience with them you don't have to room with them to have a college experience with them and I wish so many people realize that something that I heard one of my friends on campus talking about our first year was that she just went random with her roommate because she would kick herself if she'd pick somebody and actually went through the roommate selection process and purposefully selected somebody that she did not get along with that basically made her first college experience hell and I think that that's really great advice if you're somebody who you know can kind of adjust in somebody who can go with the flow with things like that I think that is like great advice it's like if you feel comfortable your best bet is going with a random roommate just because like you're not going to be upset with yourself if you didn't see the red flags at first of that person because you don't know them anyway that's a different approach that you can take something that i heard that i didn't do myself per se but something that if you're struggling with selecting and you're getting red flags from one person and you don't know how to say no i would just say go random like what can go wrong you might end up with somebody you like or hate it's a 50 50 chance either way so that's something to definitely think about in your roommate selection process. And then the next thing that I have to say about roommates is set boundaries early oh my gosh set boundaries early i will say that like i don't want to speak on behalf of my freshman year roommate i hope she's doing well if i had to talk about our relationship we were more strictly roommates although we got along really great um but we were just both busy and kind of both doing our own thing our first year so we're not super close if i see her on campus i'm going to be super excited to say hey there is no beef there whatsoever but i will say something that i regret is us not sitting down and talking about our boundaries our expectations 
expectations of each other explicitly face-to-face -face conversation earlier because literally right before covid shut everything down our freshman year there was a little bit of conflict on both ends and it could have easily been avoided if we had just spoken about our expectations earlier do not be afraid to just have 15 20 30 minute conversation with your roommate about what you do want what you don't want what you're not gonna fly with what you're not cool with what you are cool with because at the end of the day you guys are both sharing that living space and it needs to be a comfortable space for both of you classes are long classes are stressful you're gonna want to break and your room should be your sanctuary if you're someone who's a clean freak and needs things clean there's nothing wrong with requesting that you know your roommate try and make their bed every day if it becomes a problem there's nothing wrong with addressing it but i think the difficult thing is when we don't put our boundaries and our expectations out there up front so then the confrontation feels really weird and awkward and uncomfortable even though it's something that you are entitled to also by the way you guys i can speak on these topics and answer explicit questions if you guys want to dm them to me on instagram or just put them in the comments below i can definitely make a part two to this video if that's something that you guys would be interested in but i am speaking candidly just off the dome number two out of 10 things on this list is alcohol let's talk about alcohol i did not drink at all my first year of college i was home for my sophomore year of college so i didn't drink either and you guys might sit here and think that i'm a square i really don't care it's just some things are not exciting to me and that's completely fine i'm not saying that i'm anti-alcohol i'm not saying that i'm anti-drinking obviously i'm not going to sit here and condone underage drinking and for me the problem that i have with the way that alcohol is viewed on college campus and the way that just like drinking culture is on college campuses is that a college campus is a breeding ground for developing alcoholism if you are not careful and I just know so many college students hide behind the guise of needing to de-stress after a long week or just wanting to have fun with their friends as a reason to have an excuse to just get blackout drunk. You should not intentionally go out to a party to say, I am going to black out. I am going to drink so much to the point to where I am unconscious and unaware and vulnerable in any situation. That is just not what you should do. I don't think that alcohol has to be a part of the college experience i have had a great social amazing college experience you guys can watch my vlogs i've met so many great friends i've had so much fun i've gone on so many adventures without alcohol being a part of my life it's not something that i exile people out of my life for participating in but i was able to find my true friends in a fairly quick manner by seeing like who was not going to judge me for not wanting to partake in parties that simply just only revolved around alcohol i also think that during the orientation process of the way that pretty much all colleges talk about alcohol alcoholism and just drunkenness talking about it as a precautionary measure during orientation is something that's very damaging rather than saying hey it's not a good idea if you intentionally go to a party to black out what you'll probably hear at orientation is make sure you have a buddy with you if you're planning to black out rather than just not doing it in the first place obviously everybody's college experience is different i once again do not condone underage drinking if it is something that you participate in please be careful and if it's something that you feel pressured to participate in that you truly don't want to you literally don't have to and i really want you to understand that the next thing up is drugs alcohol is a drug so i could have categorized that in this but a lot of people in modern day society do not really view alcohol as a drug even though it is i'm sure you guys get the gist that i'm talking about harder drugs i'm not going to say the name of them because i don't want to get demonetized but drugs drugs okay be careful i don't have any advice to give because i've never done drugs i don't plan on ever doing drugs be careful and if you're someone who's trying to say no to drugs and you have friends that are like saying oh just try it just try it drugs aren't really anything to play with and it's not everybody's cup of tea if you're somebody who's anxious if you're someone who had an experience with drugs in high school and you didn't have an enjoyable experience and it was damaging for you do not feel the need to prove to anybody that you can hang that it's something that you're interested in if it's not something that i stick by and stand by in college is that you don't necessarily have to be true to yourself and how you present yourself but it's super super important to stick to your authentic morals and not let anybody shake the table of those and morals change over the years and that's just fine but before you go to college even if you are like somebody who's going to be a senior sit and think this is something that i am willing to participate in because i enjoy the experience or just because it's something that the people that i so happen to associate with do in their pastime 
then I feel like I have to do it too. Once again, I do not condone underage drinking. I do not condone drug use, but once again, I am speaking candidly and it's important to be realistic about these kinds of things because people are curious, people have different thresholds of risk that they're going to take. It just so happens that I'm not trying to take that risk and I just want people to be safe. And in any way, just make sure that you are not being pressured and no you do not have to do it even if it's something that you're curious about you do not have to do it you do not i'm curious about a lot of things i don't do them i don't do them i do not do them <laughs> and you don't have to either okay next up we're going to talk about sex just because the movies and the tv shows like throw that out there do not feel pressured if you are somebody who is going to have sex in college use protection you would be so surprised how many people are just have no barricade if you know what i'm saying and they're just bouncing from person to person to person stis on college campuses go like that for a reason protect yourself if you are in a situation and you are with a partner who's telling you and trying to manipulate you into not using protection they don't care about you <laughs> they do not care about you use protection be careful okay please be careful remember that you know 99 percent of us are at college to learn you don't want to have that to be stressed out at the same time also something that i want to say is you do not have to be sexually active to be comfortable in your femininity or your masculinity and really feel those things as a superpower for you i feel like a lot of media has associated those things with being sexually active and you really don't have to obviously if it's something that you truly feel ready for and you're doing for you i'm gonna say go for it but make sure you're careful and make sure that you are checking in with your mind body soul before and after because the lines can really get blurred when it comes to being taken advantage of and a lot of the times you don't even notice your own vulnerabilities so you need to be be careful and you need to be sure college is about you you are there for you do it or don't do it for you ah my camera's gonna die hold on hold on i'll be back is this thing on okay sorry you guys my camera was about to die and we're about to get into a hot and not hot and heavy no not hot and heavy but we're about to get into a pretty important topic and that is friends and friends might not be the juiciest topic because i'm sure we've all been in social situations where we've had friends or associates or whatever the case may be but friends in college especially your first year is a different story i'm not trying to scare you guys i'm just trying to <laughs> <laughs> warn you of the possibilities i'll say if you're a first year student your first three weeks 85 percent of people are not being themselves they're being the absolute best version of who they want to be okay so just keep that in mind and do without information what you will i don't want to say don't take friendship seriously within the first few weeks of your college experience but just realize that everybody's just trying to find somebody to hold on to so they can have somebody to get through the semester with and that's totally okay it's even okay if you do that but just be aware that it doesn't mean that in a case where somebody doesn't talk to you as much as they did in the first three weeks of school or throws you under the bus maybe it doesn't make you any less of a good person it's just the food chain basically it is just the food chain i would say if you want to really find friends join programs especially Especially if you are a black student or a student of color at a PWI, join diversity programs and it's going to make your life so much easier. Bonus points if you join that program and it's a program that happens to start before the semester starts and like before orientation so you already have your little group. That's what I did and I found some of my best college friends there. If it's too late for you to do that, there's plenty of programs, there's plenty of clubs. Go to like the thing called the club expo. I don't know if my school just calls it the club expo but it's basically when all the clubs are on the university lawn and they hand you out a bunch of free stuff you know what i'm saying so we love the free stuff so try that out join a club even if you just go for a couple of meetings just to meet somebody exchange do people use snapchat anymore i don't use snapchat exchange instagrams exchange phone numbers and then ask them if they want to just have lunch one day that's the easiest way to just establish connections with people just say like hey i'm going to the dining hall you want to come with super easy and not weird at all try it try it but beware of the frauds they're out there they're out there and you need to be careful. Six out of 10 
dating apps, okay? College is great. In most cases, you are away from your parents, away from any real strict guidance for the first time. And you might wanna hop on a Bumble, a Tinder, a Hinge. You might wanna do that. Be careful, okay? People are crazy. Be careful. Whether you're a guy, a girl, a non-binary person, be careful, okay? I remember I was super anti-dating apps, and then my first date that I used a dating app for, I brought my friends with me, okay? We were in that cafe, and they were sitting about three tables away. They were, because you can never be too careful, and maybe that might be a little bit extreme, but that's just a thought. Like, if you're gonna be meeting up with someone for the first time, make sure it's in a public place. Make sure that you are being responsible, taking care of yourself. If you're going to be doing anything that impairs your judgment, which I do not condone once again, be careful and maybe think twice about doing it when you're going to be in the presence of a total stranger, especially if you're going to be alone. I would also say do not get into anybody's car. I've also been watching Criminal Minds lately, so <laughs> not saying I'm paranoid, but I feel prepared. And I just know from that show all the crazy things that are possible that can happen. So just be careful. Don't let it deter you from having fun. Like don't be scared, but just be cautious and be aware and listen to your gut at the end of the day. If you feel a little iffy, about a date that you're gonna be going on to meet someone for the first time listen to your instinct and just say like oh i'm busy today let's reschedule or like i'm not interested because nine times out of ten you feel that way for a reason so just listen to your gut okay number seven professors there are good professors and there are bad professors it doesn't matter what kind of school you go to there are good instructors and there are bad ones there are people who are just there to get a check and then there are people who are there because they really love to transfer information and watch other people learn and all that beautiful moving philosophical stuff and then there are the bad ones when you have a bad one the best way to get through a class is to team up with somebody and just buddy up share notes do homework together and just get through it nine times out of ten there's going to be a curve in classes with bad professors nine times out of ten one time out of ten there's not and then i don't know what to tell you drop the class before the ad drop period ends if you care about your gpa but other than that you got it like there are bad people everywhere. There are people who don't actually care and aren't really passionate about what they do. They're everywhere. It's not just professors and it's just a part of life. If there's a professor that's messing with you, go to the dean, take it to somebody, report the behavior. If it's repetitive, if it's racist, if it's sexist, if it's anything, if a case needs to be caught, it shall be caught. The professor is going to be the one catching it. I think that's it. That's all I have to say about professors for now. If you guys have any questions about professors, let me know. Oh, one thing is hard science professors, I'm talking about like physics, chemistry, biology. No, typically biology professors are nice, but physics and chemistry, especially chemistry, I don't know what is wrong with those people. I'm so sorry if you're a chemistry professor and if you're one of the good ones, this excludes you. You're very few and far in between. God, like it's just like, I think they just need a group therapy convention, those chemistry professors, especially the intro to chemistry professors. Oh my God, it's just like, I feel so bad for you. I feel bad that I'm in this class with you, but I, I, I feel bad for you too. That, wh whatever trauma that happened to you, you think it's okay to treat people like this. I'm speaking from a personal experience if you couldn't tell. Another hot topic, older men. If you're 18, 19, if you're in college from the ages of, I don't know, even your mid twenties, I would say, maybe not. Like everybody's different, I guess. And like people fall in love, I guess. If you're 18, 19 and an older man is coming after you who like is the age of having a family and an established business, First of all, question, why is he not with somebody his age already? Then question, why is he not looking for somebody his age right now? And then question, what does he want with a barely legal person? Or she, older women, older men. I'm using older men because I'm speaking heteronormatively here, but you guys get the gist. Because some people got some major issues. Not everybody goes to therapy. Not everybody who needs therapy goes to therapy. We know this. <laughs> So don't get into the line of fire of them rehashing or coping with their past traumas and using you as that. 
Even if you're legal, it's creepy. I'm just saying, even if you're legal, it's creepy. Ninth on the list is weight gain. Weight fluctuates. Don't be stressed out about it. Eat what you need to eat. Make sure you're eating three square meals a day at a bare minimum. Stress is a thing. Stress eating is like, I'm sure, top three of coping mechanisms of every person in the world. At a point, it's not okay to cope with food. And I have learned that through experience. So just be mindful and be honest with yourself at the end of the day, be honest. Like, am I eating this because I'm stressed out right now? And if you can honestly answer yes, I mean, I'm not gonna tell you not to eat it and it will be good, but be honest with yourself. If you're someone who struggles with your relationship with food, the first step is accepting. That's the first step. And I know it's a lot easier said than done, but it's something that you deserve. You deserve to enjoy food and have a healthy relationship with food, whether you have a little bit of a challenge in your relationship with food or not. Be mindful, but don't necessarily monitor every single thing that you put into your mouth. Don't, mm, I take that back. Um, don't monitor everything that you eat. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. And the last and final thing is parties. Parties, parties, parties. Parties, parties, parties. Frat parties are disgusting. Disgusting. If you are gonna go to a frat party, make sure you wear the most disgusting pair of shoes that you own. I've only been in a frat party for like half a second and I walked right out because those floors were disgusting. I would advise wearing rain boots. Rain boots that go past your kneecaps. That's how disgusting it is. That's just my opinion though. I'm not trying to go back anytime soon. I honestly think that college parties are overrated. It's just a hub for people to get drunk. If that's your thing, there's a possibility it will be your first few weeks. It gets old really quick, especially if you're someone who doesn't drink and you hate being around drunk people like I do. It gets old really quick and you'd much rather be at the mall, eating a nice dinner, on a nice date, or in your room watching Netflix and ordering pizza, even if it's by yourself. That's just me though. Your experience is your own. And that is my advice. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. This was like the first video I've done in a while where I just sit in front of the camera and talk. And hopefully it's not a pain in the butt to edit with all my um, 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 and all of my like, like, likes and all of my, all of that. So I hope this was helpful. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. No need to attack me in the comments. All this advice was based off of my preferences, my morals, and obviously my experience. And that's totally okay if you have different experiences, morals, and preferences. That's fine, it's totally okay. Just be safe, be responsible, and don't pressure people. Be a good person. Don't throw people under the bus. Just be a responsible human being. And always remember, it's okay to make your first priority yourself, especially while you're in college. Be there for you. Do everything for you, okay? Follow me on Instagram, subscribe to my channel for lots of moving content, hauls, all that good stuff. Comment on this video as well. Sound off in the comments about how you felt about any of this stuff. And I guess I'm gonna go. Before I go, I want to remind you guys, as always, to spread kindness and always remember that the less you wonder, the more you wonder. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys. By the cottage in the blues, yeah, I wanna drown myself inside the jewel.